Okay, so now that we looked at our equations, select so copy this piece of code and insert it inside. So we'll get rid of our draw point and control V to paste it in. Okay, let's try to run it. So as we can see, it gives us an error because we haven't actually plugged in anything for our something and something else. This is not a piece of code, this is just a statement that helped us see what do we need to do. Now we actually figured out equation. So if you remember, our something was the square root of x squared plus y squared, and our something else was the radius. So as long as square root of x squared plus y squared is smaller than the radius, the point's going to be inside of the circle, and we're going to use color 2, which is gray color, to mark it. Otherwise, so if it's bigger than the radius, it's going to be outside of the circle, and we're going to use color 1, which is black color, to mark it. Okay, let's plug in square root of x squared plus y squared. And to do the square root, we are actually using the square root of function, which is a special function. And then when you type uh, your x squared and your y squared in, you want to do x times x and y times y instead of y caret 2 or x caret 2. Let's close the parentheses. Oops, I forgot this. Okay. And then we'll change our something else to a radius. Okay. Let's try to run it now. We can see that there's some um, gray points towards the middle and then black points towards the corners. This doesn't have any particular shape so far, but the longer we wait, the clearer the edges become and we, the easier it's going to be to see the circle. Yeah. In the four corners, you can kind of see the black dots a little more clearly now than at first. Okay, it's going to take some time. And the reason we use black and gray colors is so that people that are colorblind can see it as well. And one of the things you can do is change these numbers in order to define other colors. And the way to do that, you can just Google RGB values and it's going to give you like a little thing where you scroll around, find the color that you like. It's going to give you the three numbers, RGB and you just plug them in, define your colors, and then you can use them later here. We just chose black and gray. Okay, so now that we have our points drawn and we can see that there are gray points and black points, we actually need to calculate the ratio of gray points to the total number of points in order to find pi. So the way to do that is every time the point is getting drawn, we're gonna add one to it. So let's copy this code. And we're going to put it, actually going to put it after this bracket. Over. Down there. Okay. Yeah. This way, after we draw the point, whether it's inside of the circle or outside of the circle, we're going to add 1 towards the total number of points, which, which initially we defined as 0. Now, if the point is inside of the circle, we also need to add 1 so we can calculate the total number of points within the circle. So let's go back to our page and we can copy this piece of our code. Remember when we copy this one in, we also want to do control V. So let me put that in. We're going to put it in actually or in the if inside statement. of the if statement. Because we only want to add 1 to, our, to the number of points inside of the circle if the point is inside of the circle. So if the square root of x squared plus y squared is smaller than the radius, it's going to draw a gray point, which it's, we can see that the circle is getting more and more defined. So it's going to be inside of the circle, it's going to draw a gray point, and then it's going to add 1 towards the number of points inside of the circle. And then it's also going to add 1 towards the total number of points because it still adds on to the total number of points. Now, as we talked before, in order to find pi, we need to multiply the ratio of points within the circle to the points outside of the circle and inside of the circle, so the total number of points, and multiplying times 4. 
So then to do that, we're going to then copy this code here, which will print out this value. So like Kat was saying, we multiply 4 times our ratio, which is our number of points inside the circle, to the total number of points. And then that will give us pi. So we copy this, and then we'll put this over um, at the end of the draw function, and then we'll control V. And that okay. will print that. And let's run it and see what happens. So we're going back to having just a bunch of dots here. Kind of hard to see if they're inside of the circle or outside of the circle. It's just a bunch of random spots. And here, let's actually try to get it closer. Zoom in a little bit. And we're going to move a circle over so you can actually drag this over. OK, we can see the circle better. And we have numbers here. So we can see it's in different ranges. And as the circle gets more clear, so the edges become more defined, this number is actually becoming become closer to actual pi. So the more points we generate, the clearer the circle is and the closer these numbers get.